If you have ancestors that lived in Virginia, you may want to look through these early digitized chancery court records. Many of them can be viewed online. Other records can be viewed at the Library of Virginia. You can call the library for more information or visit the library. What exactly is a chancery court record? In looking it up, I found two explanations. One, a court of equity in which a judge can order acts performed, such as that a contract be modified or an activity stopped. Two, it is a court authorized, authorized to apply principles of equity rather than principles of law. We will take a look at a few of these records. This will give you examples of records you might find in this collection. The Library of Virginia has an index to the availability of the records for each county in Virginia. It gives the time frame of the records available. The status section tells if the records have been scanned, are in their original formats, or both. The notes section gives more detail about the records for that county. I will post the URL for this chart in the video description. Looking at the chart, I found that the earliest records I could find on the chart were for Accomack County and Norfolk County. Both have records available as early as 1718. But Norfolk has records until 1938 where Accomack only has them until 1913. FamilySearch Wiki has a chart giving information about the formation of each county along with parent counties and other boundary information. Before I show you how to use the chancery records, let me show you how to find this chart. If you know your relatives were in a certain county in Virginia, you might want to see when the county was formed and what the parent county was before. Then you might want to check records for the parent county also if your ancestors were there before the current county was formed. Checking counties nearby that county is also a good idea. Right, we're going to do a Google search. At least that's what I did. I did Family Search Wiki. And this came up, and it probably came up because I have searched for this before. I will put this link in the description. Let's see if we can get it to come up. It's going slow today. And here is our chart. Um, now, when I go to Virginia and search Virginia, I can't find the link to find this. I'm not sure exactly how else to find it. But I want to show you what else you can do because it's not just for Virginia. They have this for every state. So if I just take this state out of here, and let's put in Texas. And there is Texas. And let's try um, let's try Florida. And there it is for Florida. So you can do it for every state once you have this link. Let me come back here to Virginia. And that's how you find that. And it is important when you are searching here to check the counties. So let me go down. I do research for Pennsylvania. So let me go down here. So I'm slow. Here's Pennsylvania. And it says that Halifax, first of all, it was created December 15th of 1766. And Halifax was the parent county. So if I'm researching in these chancery records and I'm looking only in Pennsylvania, if my relatives have been there before Pennsylvania was created, and I do have some of my offshoots uh, that were in Halifax, they were there before Pennsylvania. So I need to also check Pennsylvania and Halifax, not just Pennsylvania. Now if we look at Halifax, we'll go up here to Halifax. There it is, and it was created in 1752. Lunenburg was the county before that. So you may want to also put Lunenburg in and do a check for your name in Lunenburg and continue to go farther back. But of course, you want to also check 
the counties that are nearby, the neighboring counties, because sometimes they lived right on the border. Sometimes some of the family moved across the border. So that's something else that you can think about when you're checking for the counties. I want to show you this Annie Maps and how to get to it. And this again is good for all the states. So we go to Family Search Wiki and we're going to go to North America and we're going to go to the United States and then I'm going to go to Virginia. And it says right here, boundary changes for Virginia counties. So I'm going to click on that. And it takes me to these maps of Virginia. And right down here it says interactive map of Virginia county formation history. And this is kind of fun. It's called it's from this Annie map. And so we just if you you're going to come down here, you can see the different counties. And this is how Virginia started out and we're going to play and it's going to you watch these years as it's playing. And you can see that it's adding, it tells you up here the year, 1737, the different counties, 1743, 45, 1651. These are the new counties in 1654, 56. Now we can stop it here and you could just click, let's see, I think, what was Pennsylvania? Was it 1766? We can click here. Yep, Pennsylvania was made from Halifax. So if you just want to uh, see the uh, different years and want to go faster than this, you can do that. Um, now let's see if I click on Halifax down here. These and the, okay, so these are the abbreviations that you're going to see in here. So here's MEC. If you're not sure what MEC is, you come down here, and it's Mercer County in West Virginia. Okay, let's do Halifax. If I click on Halifax, then it takes me here to Halifax and gives me the creation date of 1752. So you can come back here and say 1752, and it would say Halifax from Lunenburg. Anyways, it's kind of a fun map and to give you the historical perspective and how Virginia was divided off, and it does that for the different states also. So I just wanted to share that with you. Here's the main search page for the Chancery Records. There are three main sections. The first section allows you to choose the county you want to search for. You will probably want to pick a county rather than searching the whole state of Virginia. The second part is where you will search by name. You can search by plaintiff, defendant, or by searching just for the last names. The last section is searching a range of years. Once you have put in your information, you will then click the search button. Okay, we're going to get to the Chancery Records now. And I just typed in Virginia Chancery Records and it comes up with this Chancery Records Index. So I'm going to click there. It brings me to this and here is the search index. Now I want to point out right here, there's a search tips. You can click on that. Um, let's go to the search index and it takes us to this page here and also search tips there. So I want to go through some of these search tips um, and so I'm going to show you that in the next few slides. Tip number one is using the locality or finding the county or the city. The default is all localities. But if you come down and you say, okay, I want Amelia County. And then you say, well, you know what, I think I really do want to have uh, some other county. So you just hold the control key down and you continue to hold it down and pick the different counties that you want to search by. And that shows you those in the blue are the areas that it will be searching, the counties or cities that it will be searching. 
Okay, tip number two is filling in the name. We have the plaintiff, the defendant, or surname. Now we have these over here. It says equals. We have equals starts with or includes. So equals is exactly what you've typed. And so if I type in there Samuel, well, let's just type in, then let's type in Samuel with the equals and do a search. And I didn't get anything. So let's change it to starts with and a search. And then we've got Samuel, Fakwa, and company. And we have three results. I've got Amelia County up here marked. but So let's try uh, includes and do a search. And again, we've got three different ones. Let's try all counties. Let's change it to all counties. And let's try it again. Let's try, let's start with equals. Jacob Samuel, James Samuel. So this is the last name. Okay, let's try starts with. We may not see a whole lot of differences, but. Okay, Samuel and Egerton, Samuel E. Egerton, Samuel Shelton. So this time it got, oh, it's Samuel Shelton and company. So you're gonna get different results and notice here when I've got all counties, it comes down and it tells you each of the counties that there was a hit in and it gives you the information. So that chart that I showed you earlier, you're going to get the chart if you use all the counties or whatever counties you mark. If there's a hit in there, then it's going to show that county and the information on that. Okay, I think that's everything I needed to show you on the the names begins with yep. okay um, so the other thing is you have to have a name or you have to have an index number and on the when I get more into the records I'll try to show you an index number or a file number so you have to have at least a, a last name on one of these and then a surname here on just the surnames. If you don't, if you're looking for both plaintiff and defendants, you would fill this out. So I would put, uh, let's try Samuel here. Before it was just coming out with the defendants. Let's try a defendant, Samuel, and let's do uh, includes. Whoops, I didn't spell that correctly. And do a search. The counties, lots of counties, and so now the Samuel's coming here on the defendants. But if you want both, you're not sure whether they're going to be a plaintiff or defendant, then let's put Samuel there and do a search. And then I have some kind of a Samuel. Did I do this correctly? I don't see Samuel. Did I put Samuel? And is a surname. Oh, I have equals. So let's do includes. Let's change that one back to equal. Let's see if that makes a difference. I should pick just one county. But somewhere in those documents, the name of Samuel comes up even though we don't see it here. Anyways, that's kind of how you search for the name using this record. Who is the plaintiff? The party or person who brings an issue or lawsuit to court against another party or person. Who is the defendant? The party or person who are being sued. In other words, the person or party who are trying to convince the court that they are not at fault. Tip number three is using this year of case. 
Now I'm not going to put any range in there. I just have Amelia County, one county, and Thompson. And we're going to see if anybody comes up. I haven't done this before, so let's see what happens. So here's Amelia County, and it's 1738 to 1939. So it's searching all of those years. Well, now if my ancestors were there, like 1800, so I've got all these different Thompsons that are coming up. Some here's one that's a defendant. Here, defendant. Let's see. Here's one that's uh, the plaintiff. Okay, so, and here's a Jennings and a Samuel. That's probably my family. I have a Jennings and Samuel. Okay, so, let's see. Does it, it gives you the year here. Let's see, for this one. 1797 was the year on this one. And here's one, 1794. So let's just do, because we really don't want, there's three pages, more pages. I don't know how many more pages. So it looks like they go in the order 1750, 57, 56. So you can do it that way without putting in a range. But let's say I want, I'll do 1780 to 1820. So you can put a range in and do a search. And this time I only have one page. Um, Anyway, so that's the other tip is using that range instead of looking at all of the years of the county. I want to show you one of the families that I found and just what to do with it once you find something. So I put in Pennsylvania County and Thompson and I did my search. I didn't put in any years. And one of the records comes up in 1844, Children of Raleigh Thompson. So if you want, once you find something, you click the view details. And it came up over here. Let me pull it up, okay. And we, you check right here, it says Pennsylvania, Children of Raleigh Thompson. And the index number, that's, remember, you could search by index number. There's that number. So if you write that down or keep that record, then you can use that to find it the next time. And the surnames that are mentioned in here is Reeson and Thompson. Now, it has one of four pages. I'm looking at page one. And it's really small. It's really hard to read this. And most of this is in cursive. This one actually has is print. Uh, but you can increase the size. And so you can make it bigger so you can read it. But then the problem is it goes off the page. So you have to use these sidebars. We don't have to go down. If we needed to, you can go down, but you can also go across. So we have up here 1844. Chancery causes petition of children of Raleigh Thompson by etc. Estate dispute. Uh, Reason. That's the other last name. Okay, let's go to the next page. Okay, and again, it's this one is in cursive. So if you don't read cursive, you have to get somebody to help you. Um, but again, you're going to want to increase it. I have to increase it quite a bit to see it. So then I'm having to go over here and read. Uh, to his honor, Norborn M. Talifero, Judge of the Circuit Supreme Court of Law and Chancery for Pennsylvania County. The petition of Susan H. Sam Ewell J. Martha A. Catherine S. Sarah F. and Raleigh Thompson Infant, children of Raleigh Thompson D-E-C-D, -E that's deceased by their next friend, George W. Thompson. Now, I have Raleigh Thompson in it. He, it, it records sometimes spell it R-A-W-L-E-Y and the other, like it's used in this record here. 
where it's uh, up here R A L E I G H but it's the same Raleigh here and if we go to Raleigh and go to oh I need to refresh the page sorry let's go to Raleigh Thompson let's try it again view this person his person page And we find out that he was married twice, Jane Foster Anderson. His first son is George W. Thompson. And that is when it said next friend. That is who it is, George Thompson. And Raleigh married second after his first wife died and had six children. And those are the children, Samuel, Susan, Martha, Catherine, Sarah, and Raleigh, that are mentioned in this record. Now this is not in the sources. This one has 65 sources. Um, let me see the year. 1844. Let's go to the sources. And I don't think there is a record. No, 1844. So I do have a lot of guardianship records for Raleigh and for his children but I do not have this record so that's why I chose to go through with this one now you can sit here and do this using these sidebars going back and forth back and forth then up and down so I go down to keep reading um, now you can go to full view here and then it's much easier but still you have to use the sidebar to come up and down this way but at least you can see we can go larger so it looks like uh, 175 would make it easier to read so this way I just have to come up and down this way now um, so that makes it much easier when I do it that way but the other thing that you can do so you say oh this is a record I this is my family. I really want to use this. So you can sit and you can download or print off each of these different pages. So if there's 15 pages and there's only two pages that you need or only one specific page, you can click here and download or print it off. Let's see what this says here. Oh yeah, I looked at that and wasn't quite sure what document properties anyways. Mostly you'll use to download I've already downloaded it, but if you want the whole thing, it says download a zip file of the entire case. This was four pages. So let me pull over here onto this page. I downloaded it and here it is. This is the zip file. If I double click on it, I get each one of those documents. So this is page two. and let me pull it over here and so now I have it as a PDF and so I can work with it here and that way I can if I need to if you know how to use PDFs you can do some drawing or marking things if you need to to maybe circle somebody's name or underline it to prove like here's George W qualified as his administrator Here's Raleigh Thompson. So if you wanted to somehow mark that on here, um, you can do that with using the PDF thing. And here again, you can print it from this. But now one of the problems I had is I wanted to upload this and I do not want to upload four different ones. Four would not be bad, but some of these documents are like 50 pages long and you certainly don't want to upload 50 pages to somebody's sources or to their memories. It would just fill. He's got some memories here, but to put 50 different pages on here, you really want it as one document. So if you have Adobe uh, Reader, you can combine uh, those pages into one. I don't happen to have Adobe Reader. So what I'm going to show you what I did. Let me see here. Bring it over here. So I brought up Word. And I took screenshots. 
and I do the little Windows Control, no, Windows Shift S. If I hold those down, it kind of grays out the, uh, the screen, and then you take your mouse and you go over the area that you want to copy. Um, let me just kind of show you using this right here. Well, let me let me bring this PDF over here and show you if I wanted to make this. Let's say I wanted a section of it, so I do that window screen, the little four boxes, Shift and S, and see it darkens it, and then I just kind of go over this area. And then it tells me I have a sti the snip and sketch. And I can click here and then I, I can tell it. So let's click on that. And now I can, again, I can do some editing, but I can save it uh, as a file, that part of it. Anyways, that's how I do the, I do the whole pages. Uh, you can also use the snipping tool. I think I did a video using the snipping tool, but you can find one, I'm sure, if you do snipping tool right there, and it works the same way. Either one of those works. So let me put this down. So I copied the sections of the pages, and then I transcribed what I saw on here, what I could read. And when you do a transcription, you try to keep it so this line is exactly what this line is here. Pennsylvania County. I don't write it all out in one. And like the children are petitioning. I could have put that all in one sentence, but it's written this way, so I try to do it that way. And then page two, I have that page here, that whole page, and then I did the transcription. So see how it said the petition of Susan H. Samuel J. I didn't fix that. Let's go up here. It has Sam right there, if you can see it. Uh, let me see, let me get my Word document. There we go. So I can get it a little bit bigger. So you can see right there, it says Sam Yule J. So that's how I transcribed it. Let me make it. I did it exactly the way it's written on there. That way it makes it much easier to find, if I wanted to find that, the said George W. Qualified, and I'm trying to look for that, I can count down one, two, three, four, five, six, there it is, that, the said, and so it makes it easier to find it. Now I have this saved, and I'm going to save, I have, so I have this, I have each of the documents, the four pages, and then I have transcribed it underneath it, and then there's this last page and what I had everything that was on there. So it came out to six pages. I'm going to save this. I'm going to export it and change it to a PDF. And I'll keep it named the same. History, make sure I know where I've got it. It actually should be Thompson Raleigh. I need to put it there under Raleigh Thompson. Okay, publish. And then it comes up as a PDF. So I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of this. Now I'm on Raleigh and I want to bring this up into the memories. So let me get my file ready. Raleigh Thompson here. I'm going to bring this over to my other screen. Let me first show you. So there it changed it to the PDF. There's the PDF. That's what I'm going to upload. So it says memories, add a memory. And I'm going to bring in a file from your device. Oh, I have to go looking for it. So pictures, family history, Pennsylvania, nope, Thompson, Raleigh Thompson. There it is. PDF. Open.
and it is processing it right now. So Raleigh Thompson won, or 1844. So I have the year. I'm not sure how long it will take, but what I can do is now going to be in my gallery. So I can come over here to the sources, and I can say add a source, and I'm going to say from my memories. And I can say guardianship record. Oh, wait, this is the year. Sorry, I don't have it up there. I'm going to get rid of that. I'll put that down here under the title. It was 1844 is the year. And it's from the memory. And I'm going to select from the gallery. I'm going to click on that. It has that little box. And I'm going to say import. And there it is. And I can say guardianship. Well, I can put down here uh, from Virginia Chancery Records. And then I can, now I think I can go over here. Okay, see, I can't get every page, but. I will just do this. I'm going to highlight this, come back over here, and then I can put in here that URL, at least for one page of it, and then I can save it. And it should come up, 1844. There it is, Guardianship Records. And it shows that I uploaded that. Uh, on May 15th, 2023. Okay, I'm going to take a short break. I'll be back. I have a few other things I want to show you, but that was the main way I wanted to show you finding the record and what to do with it, how to get it into Family Search so that it can be found and read by other people. On this one, this is the last thing I'm going to do because this video is getting really long. But I wanted to show you, when I first pulled them up, there was a Jennings Thompson executor of Samuel Thompson. And this is part of the family that I have been researching in Pennsylvania, but this is in Amelia County. And that's why I said you want to sometimes check other counties. Um, but notice here there's 21 pages. So... If I'm going through this and like there's one specific page and you have to go next, 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 next to get to all these pages, it takes a long time. So first of all, I just wanted to show you right here. Let me bring this up. Uh, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. But I know that this is my family because I looked at the children and it says Jenny Thompson. Edward Robinson, Mary Pullen, his wife, Washington Thompson, Samuel Thompson, Cuthbert Price, Nancy, his wife, William Thompson. Anyways, those are definitely the children of Samuel Thompson that I have been working with. Um, so, let, I wanted to show you here that the one of the few things, this is one of those cases where you definitely wouldn't want to put 21 pages onto Family Search. You would want to download it and somehow make it a PDF. And I think you can actually say create combined PDFs. And there's some free services at least a few times that you can do it that way. I've done a few that way and then they want you to pay after that. But anyway, so if I want to go to like page 16, I can type in 16 and hit enter. And it takes me to page 16. That way you don't have to look at every page. Um, anyways, I just wanted to show you that. I think I've showed you the basics of using these chancery records. Um, I'm sure there's more. It, this one is uh, says here, scanned. 
Oh, I wanted to show you this. He did it. I think it said it on one of these early ones. Let me go back to the beginning. Go. I'm going to have to go page by page. Because I think, yes, best copy available from microfilm. So they, this was microfilm. This is not the original. And some of them tell you that they, it was from the original. This one comes from a microfilm. So if you wanted to actually see the microfilm, I think you could go back there and look at the microfilm. But you're probably going to do better looking at it this way because you can blow it up much bigger so that you can read it. And then you can, like I said, you can open it in full, the full thing, the full page, so that you can see it that way. Um, anyways, I think that's everything. I hope you've learned something. I hope this helps you find something. This I haven't even looked through this record. I don't think this one is on Family Search, so I'm going to be working on this one for a little while. Anyway, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting!